Let's bring on the SPC upgrade. Storm season in America's heartland, 2021. This is Michael, science out there, and here's my review of the year and how well my 2021 forecast did. Here's what I expected going into 2021. It began as a La Nina year with a mixed bag of drought conditions on the High Plains and EML source region. This suggested an above average season in the deep south over winter and early spring, with possible storm chasing conditions ranging wildly from boring to S tier. But overall, the plains were expected to have a below average season. My analogs were storm seasons like 1999, 2008, 2011, 1989, 1976, and 1971. Most of these focused on major deep south threats and an affinity for I-35 major outbreaks. But years like 1971 and 1989 had a twist. Less tornado activity on or near Interstate 35, strong tornadoes around the Carolinas, and a rather active high plains, places like the eastern halves of Colorado and New Mexico. As you probably already knew, January and February featured some of the coldest weather we've seen in a long time, with deep cold invasions far into Texas, causing mayhem, a symptom of very negative AO, where the polar vortex struggles to organize over the North Pole, and instead invades the North American and Eurasian continents. And while that made winter quiet for severe weather, things changed quickly, however, with two high-risk areas in the Deep South in March, Exactly the type of thing you expect to see in a season like this one. Don't let it fool you that there was a high just a few days ago. This one has some real teeth on it. Not just for the number of tornadoes, but for the intensity, the long lividness, the track length, and the potential destructive power of these tornadoes is as high as it goes. However, the late start put me off the mark in terms of total tornado reports by the end of the year. But a surge in severe weather in December lofted the year's total to within inches of that number. Nailed the analogs, the high spring activity in the south, and the weaker overall tornado counts on most of the plains, and was within striking distance of the overall tornado number. This year, I give myself my first A grade. Good, that makes up for 2020, I guess. But personally, I did pretty well chasing this year. A half dozen photogenic tornadoes and many other weaker intercepts, making 2021 a banner chase year for me overall. If the themes of 2020 were anxiety, painful failure modes, and storm structure, 2021 was a theme of optimism and just learning to have fun again. And for the second year in a row, my buddy Mike Mars wins craziest intercept of the year. One thing I loved about this year was all the dusty high plains chasing footage I got. Enough that my two brothers and I made a little music video, creating a shameless nod to the works of Michael Binsky and Picos Hank. Here are Sean and Jay's song, Haboob, set to some of that dusty footage.
a year of tornadoes and dust, but 2021 was no slouch for hail encounters either. not about the busts, but rather the friends we make along the way. Hey Nick, yeah. heads up. In spite of all the fun I was having, it wasn't without the sometimes unusual frustrations. It's quite possibly the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen while chasing. Being stopped by a jackknifed, basically, wind turbine blade. And I want to chase this storm, right? And I want to go over here. And there's my turn. And I, 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 just, I just don't know. <laughs> I just don't know. <laughs> Bunch of people leaving. <laughs> Are you freaking kidding me? Twenty-one had plenty of teachable moments, too, when things weren't otherwise going all that well that day. This is an absolutely textbook split supercell situation. Behind my head is a right split, and over here is a left split. That might be your right and your left, but it doesn't matter. Point is, from the back side, that one's a left and this one's a right. And it started out with a central updraft that pushed up, and on either side of it, it created a anti-cyclone, and also a cyclone. And so from those two little low pressure cyclones that the initial updraft created, on either side of it, new updrafts formed with built-in spin. They were spinning when they were born. And so this storm is the classic plains right mover, the, the kind that generally produces tornadoes, if a tornado is to be produced. And over here, these generally just should die off, dissipate, move on out. Or fool me, <laughs> we'll see. And in case you're wondering, this is what a supercell would look like in Australia or South America. So you can see what they look like here on the plains. You just have to wait for the nearly perfect textbook example of one. And this is it.
hard to believe that I went years never seeing or photographing a single sprite, and now I'm effortlessly capturing them almost every time I attempt to do so. 2021 wasn't without tragedy, nor is any year. And while recent events in December once again remind us that tornadoes can strike any time of the year, it's my hope also that home and business owners are taking an even closer look at their disaster preparedness plans, the quality of the shelter they have access to, and take a second look at their new construction plans. While tornadoes are an unavoidable part of living in the eastern United States, death, injury, and local economic disaster is avoidable. And storm structure? 2021 held its own. Every storm had a personality as usual, but nothing over the top like we had last year. Okay, inflow tail. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, cool. Yeah, 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 keep going. Keep going, not done yet, not done yet. Oh, there we go. Mezzo. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and welcome aboard if you are a new subscriber. My next video will be the 2022 US tornado season forecast video. Please do all the things to make sure you don't miss it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you out there.